Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, glad we had an opportunity to come back uh, for uh, the second panel. I know the first panel had a, a, a very focus and emphasis on uh, U.S. Penitentiary Atlanta. Uh, but with uh, a number of federal facilities in California that I've been hearing from, I wanted to take the opportunity to raise this, a uh, couple of these uh, questions. Now, my office has received reports that uh, BOP personnel at FCI Mendota were flouting COVID protocols, leading to the transportation of COVID positive detainees and spikes in infections. Now, Senator Feinstein and I sent a letter to the Attorney General seeking answers concerning these allegations back in April. However, the agency response we received failed to reply to our specific concerns raised concerning FCI Mendota. And uh, Mr. Carvajal, I appreciate you looking through some notes here. Hopefully we can get some uh, uh, clear insight as to what's happening. So my first question is, how do you respond to the allegations uh, that I'm raising here today that we first wrote about back in April? Well, Senator, we certainly don't we expect anyone to flout COVID. We have very good procedures in place and they're followed. I'm generally aware of, of that letter and we have 122 facilities. And again, I go back to that we have regional directors. We have processes in place to provide oversight. We take these allegations seriously. Uh, we look into them and we do the corrective action. The, the, the continuous challenge is that it's different people. We, we it, zero tolerance for unacceptably not following policies. So we look into these things and we address them. So you say there's protocols and they're followed. We send you a letter saying we're hearing protocols are not being followed and it's a dangerous situation, this pandemic. Uh, and the response again is not informative or helpful whatsoever, whatsoever other than we have protocols that are being followed and if not, we're gonna look into it. And we already communicated to you months ago that we understand they weren't being followed. So as part of our follow-up with you, I'm aware that uh, BOP utilizes compliance review teams to ensure that facilities comply with protocols. Now, after Senator Feinstein and I raised concerns about FCI Mendota, was a compliance review team deployed to ensure compliance with COVID protocols? Senator, I don't know in this particular instance, but we do use compliance teams. We also uh, ensure that we follow CDC guidance and, pro and processes and guidelines. So I would expect that they were, again, delegated. I have 122 facilities. There's a delineation of authority, and I fully expect those follow-ups to be done, and when they're not, that we have procedures to address that. So beginning to uh, share the frustration with the chair here on lack of a definitive answer. Um, given what I've described so far, and if you're familiar with the letter, it seems like you were perusing it in your binder, would you agree that would be appropriate to deploy a, a compliance review team? And after such concerns are being raised? Yes, Senator, and I don't, I don't know why we didn't. I, would, I will ask that question and follow up. I would expect that the appropriate regional director uh, requested a team or that the assistant director with oversight for that area would deploy a team, but I can't answer that right now because I don't know. Uh, now let me try a different uh, issue. Uh, <clears throat> now, augmentation, the uh, BOP practice involving the push of civilian employees into duties usually performed by correctional officers has long been scrutinized. Unless you tell me uh, you believe otherwise, I will continue. Uh, as of last year, nearly one-third of federal correctional officer jobs were vacant. That's a significant percentage. As a result, staff members who serve as cooks, teachers, and nurses have been forced to guard detainees. Just this week, my office received reports that at FCI Dublin, staffing has been so low that the drug treatment program had to be shut down. Now, this is clearly a dangerous and unsustainable situation. Mr. Carvajal, what efforts have you personally taken to overcome staffing shortages at BOP? Not what initiatives may be in place or efforts may be in place by others, your personal involvement in addressing staffing shortages. 
Well, Senator, my personal involvement, as well as the agency, is it's a top priority. Staffing remains a concern. It has been a concern. We, we struggle like everyone to get employees, but we are doing using incentives. We're looking at uh, offering more recruitment and retention incentives. We need to better our training. We certainly need to attract the candidates to the area. One of the challenges in Dublin, as I uh, uh, referred to earlier, is that we have trouble competing with the pay scale in that area. So we have a hard time attracting candidates. Uh, certainly staffing is a priority. An institution is safer when it's well staffed and we strive to add staff. Uh, I'd like to address the augmentation and, and, and make sure that everyone understands that all of our staff are equally trained. They're all federal law enforcement officers. They go through the same training. So although they may have a primary duty as a uh, working in food service or another discipline, which we certainly want them to do, the safety and security mission comes first. And oftentimes, we don't like doing it, but we have to complete that mission first in order for anything else to happen. So we have to use staff in those areas. They are properly trained. All of our staff are equally trained and expected to perform those functions as we call correctional workers first. So, so you're saying nurses and teachers are equally trained and prepared to do the duty of all other correctional officers? Senator, they go through the exact same training that our correctional officers go through. Ongoing training? or Senator, that's one of the challenges that we're trying to do to improve the agency is, is conduct more training. Uh, when we have the luxury of doing that training, we, we try to do advanced training. We're implementing a new program for correctional officers. But at this point, all of our staff receive the same training annually, refresher training. There is no advanced training that correctional officers receive, Senator. The, uh, well, that should ring alarm bells here as well. I know my time is running out, but let me just uh, sort of conclude with this. And emphasizing the point why vacancies are dangerous, both for detainees as well as for staff. You know, it's critical that, critical that trained guards be available to respond to critical situations so that those who are not trained to do so are not placed in harm's way. Again, the lives of both detainees and staff are on the line. Now, my office has also received outreach due to a number of detainee suicides at FCI Mendota. And according to reports, the latest suicide occurred while Recreation Department staff members were supervising detainees. Recreation Department staff members were supervising detainees. Mr. Carbajal, I don't believe that the staff members should perform duties that lie outside the scope of their employment, especially when it comes to correctional supervision. Um, I, I, I want to ask additional questions here because the responses are a recurring theme. You say it's a priority, you say there's incentives, you say, but the numbers, a third of the positions vacant shows failure in my opinion. Something's got to change, and you're the person at the top. Thank you, Mr. Chair.